Welcome to Angel Health Academy. Subject Community Health Nursing. Topic for the day is Occupational Health Nursing. Occupational Health Nursing. I would like to make three parts of this video. First part includes a or consist of introduction, definitions, aims, objectives, and occupational health hazards. Occupational health hazards may be a short note. So, it may be asked as a short note. So, in this video, I would like to discuss in detail about the introduction, definitions, aims, objectives and occupational health hazards. Then, in the next video, that is part 2 of occupational health nursing, it includes a pneumoconiosis and its classification. Pneumoconiosis will be an another short note from this topic. Then, part 3 video may consist the measures of health promotion, health promotion of the employees in different occupational settings. Then, prevention of occupational diseases, that is medical measures, engineering measures and legislative measures. Then, role and functions of community health nurse in occupational nursing. No work is completely free from risk. All the work has got its own risk. And the health care professionals or health team members should have some basic knowledge, some minimum knowledge about the workforce or work settings about the employees or population and about their work types of works and related hazards, occupational hazards and various methods to prevent and control those hazards and improve the health of the employees or the workers. So, no work is completely risk free and all health care professionals should have some basic knowledge about the workforce or work settings, the employees, the nature of work and related health hazards or occupational hazards and various methods to prevent and control those hazards to improve the health of the employees or workers. Occupational health is an important part of the preventive medicines. That is, it is essentially a preventive medicine. That means, it is application of preventive medicines in all the settings or all the places of employment. Next is definitions. First definition related to occupational health. According to Harrington and Jill 1992, under WHO and International Labour Organization, occupational health is defined as the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, mental and social well-being of workers in all occupations. So, according to Harrington and Jill 1992 under WHO and ILO, occupational health is defined as the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, highest degree means the maximum degree, optimum health, optimum physical, mental and social well-being of all the workers in all occupations. The promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical, mental and social well-being of workers in all occupations. The second definition is related to occupational health nursing, OHN. According to American Association of Occupational Health Nurses, AAOHN, American Association of Occupational Health Nurses, occupational health nursing is defined as the application of nursing principles in conserving the health of the workers in all occupations. That means it is the application of nursing principles in conserving. Conserving means protecting and promoting the health of the employees or workers in all occupational settings. Next is aims of occupational health nursing. Aims of occupational health nursing consist four pieces. First piece stands for promotion and maintenance. Second piece stands for prevention and control. Third piece stands for protection of workers. And last piece stands for placing and maintenance. Let us see first piece that is promotion and maintenance. That means promotion and maintenance of efficiency and well-being of all the workers or employees. So, maintaining and promoting the effectiveness of the job and the uh, physical, mental and social well-being of all the employees or workers. That is the first aim. Second aim is prevention and control of all ill health related to occupation, accidents related to occupation and uh, disabilities occurring during employment. Disabilities occurring during employment. So, second P stands for prevention and control of ill health, accidents and uh, disabilities. Third P stands for protection of workers. That means protection of workers against any health hazards related to their occupation or in relation to their occupation. 
the last p stands for placing and maintenance of all the workers or employees in safe occupational environment that means providing safe occupational environment that is placing and the maintenance of workers in safe occupational environment according to his physical ability and the psychological ability according to the adaptation of physical ability and the psychological ability these are the four piece of aims of occupational health nursing next is objectives of occupational health nursing there are four objectives of occupational health nursing first one is to promote and maintain the highest degree of physical mental and social well being of all the workers or employees in all occupations to promote and maintain the highest degree of pms physical mental and social well being of employees second objective is to prevent sickness and accidents due to working conditions due to various working conditions to prevent sickness and that is ill health and accidents due to working situation or working conditions third objective is to provide safe occupational environment to provide safe occupational environment for all the employees the last objective is that is a fourth objective is to assist the injured and disabled employees for rehabilitation that is to assist for rehabilitation to assist the injured employees and disabled employees for rehabilitation so there are four objectives of occupational nursing first one is to promote and maintain the highest degree of physical and mental social well being of all employees in all working situations or all occupations second is to prevent sickness and accidents due to working situations or conditions third one is to provide safe occupational environment for all the employees in all the occupational settings to safeguard the health of the employees that is to provide safe occupational environment the last one is to assist the injured and disabled employees for rehabilitation that is to assist for rehabilitation the most important part of the day is occupational health hazards or workplace hazards this will be a short note occupational health hazards or workplace hazards let us discuss in detail about occupational health hazards or workplace hazards occupational health hazards can be classified into under six major headings that is physical hazards chemical hazards biological hazards mechanical hazards psychosocial hazards and others others include ergonomical hazards then psychosocial hazards also includes psychological hazards psychosomatic hazards and social hazards that is psychological psychosomatic and social hazards so there are six important occupational health hazards they are physical hazards chemical hazards biological hazards mechanical hazards psychosocial hazards and others i have also made a mnemonic for occupational health hazards so let us discuss that mnemonic it is easy to understand without mnemonic but if you need you can use the mnemonic also that is pcbsc and msc psychiatric online courses that is pcbsc post certificate of bsc nursing and the msc psychiatry online courses p stands for physical hazards c stands for chemical hazards bsc stands for biological hazards msc stands for mechanical hazards psychiatry stands for psychosocial hazards and last online course stands for others so these are the six important classification of occupational health hazards under the mnemonic of pcbsc and msc psychiatry online courses let us discuss in detail about the occupational health hazards first one is physical hazards physical hazards means physical agents within the work environment or work settings there are seven important physical agents that is extreme temperature first one is extreme temperature includes heat and cold heat and cold comes under extreme temperature second is light third one is noise fourth one is vibration fifth physical agent is radiation sixth one is electricity and last one is others last one is others or seventh one is others that is pressure so you can use a small mnemonic to understand the physical hazards ln brio ln brio means e l n v r e o e stands for extreme temperature l stands for light n stands for noise v stands for vibration r stands for radiation e stands for electricity and o stands for others or you can also use that another mnemonic elino viralo elino viralo elino means e stands for extreme temperature la stands for light no stands for noise vi stands for vibration r stands for radiation e stands for el stands for electricity and o stands for others so 
otherwise also simply you can remember this uh, uh, seven physical agents like extreme temperature which includes heat and cold light noise vibration radiation electricity and others which includes pressure let us discuss in detail about the physical agents first one is extreme temperature which includes heat and cold so under extreme temperature first one is heat the common physical hazard the or the most common physical hazard in almost all the industry is heat production of various heat heat related problem may be due to radiant heat heat stagnation and high temperature of the heat most of the industries have local hot spots in their industry may be from ovens furnaces which all radiate the heat in the industry so the main problem of the some of the industries like foundry glass and steel industries are radiant heat then second is heat stagnation here the heat is not radiating it is stagnating in a particular place that is a principal problem of jute and cotton textile industries then at the same time other industry they may have high temperature that is found in especially in mines example kolar gold mines in mysore so this radiant heat heat stagnation and high temperature could be seen in different industries actually there is no specific temperature standard set by the indian factories act that is indian factories act has not laid down any specific temperature standard for the industries however according to rao and mukherji et al they have given a comfort zone of uh, the effective temperature is 60 to 80 degree fahrenheit or 20 degree celsius to 27 degree celsius that will be the comfort zone in, in the industry according to rao and mukherji and at the same time they have mentioned if the temperature goes above 80 degree fahrenheit or 27 degree celsius it causes discomfort to the employees so indian factory act has not been laid down any specific temperature standard but uh, according to the research studies rao and mukherji et al they have been given a comfort zone of the temperature that is 60 to 80 degree fahrenheit or 20 degree celsius to 27 degree celsius health effect of heat temperature includes both direct effect and indirect effect of heat let us see what are the direct effect and indirect effect of heat exposure the direct effect of heat exposure in an industry includes either burns heat exhaustion heat stroke heat cramps prickly heat etc let us see what is heat exhaustion heat stroke heat cramps uh, prickly heat etc first one is heat exhaustion the major symptoms of heat exhaustion includes dizziness fainting attack or fainting blurring of vision cold clammy and sweaty skin due to exposure of direct exposure of the heat in an industry that can be due to heat exhaustion that includes dizziness fainting attack blurring of vision cold clammy and sweaty skin etc next is heat stroke the symptoms are cyanosis muscle twitching disorientation delirium convulsion etc so direct exposure of heat can lead to heat stroke which includes cyanosis muscle twitching disorientation delirium convulsions etc next is heat cramps that is muscle cramps in the body uh, usually seen in the legs due to direct exposure of the heat in an occupational setting prickly heat also known as miliaria rubra that is a pruritic skin rashes due to direct exposure of the excessive heat the prickly heat is also known as miliaria rubra the second is the indirect effect of the heat exposure in an industry that may lead to decreased efficiency in work effectiveness of the work is decreased then at the same time it increase the fatigue or fatigueness of the employees and ultimately that lead to enhance or increase the accident chances accident rates in the industry so decreased efficiency increased fatigue and enhanced or increased the accident rates in the industry or factors these are the indirect effect of heat exposure in an industry under extreme temperature the second one is cold exposure of cold the extreme effects of cold temperature in an industry may leads to general and local cold injury the important hazards associated with the cold exposure Ah, uh, in the work, actually, it is the result of the cutaneous vasoconstriction. So, extreme effect of cold temperature may lead to cutaneous vasoconstriction. That may lead to general and local cold injury in the industries. Let us see what are they. The health effects of cold temperature includes five important health effects. First one is chill blains. Second one is erythrocyanosis. Third one is 
ഫ്രോസ്റ്റ് ബൈറ്റ് ഫോർത്ത് വൺ ഇസ് ജനറൽ ഹൈപ്പോതെർമിയ ആൻഡ് ഫിഫ്ത് വൺ ഇസ് ഇമേർഷൻ ഫോർട്ട് ഓർ ട്രഞ്ച് ഫോർട്ട് യു ക്യാൻ യൂസ് ദ നെമോണിക് ടു റിമെമ്പർ ദിറ്റ് സി ഇ എഫ് ജി എച്ച് ഐ സി സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ ചിൽബ്രെയിൻസ് ഇ സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ എരിത്രോസൈനോസിസ് എഫ് സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ ഫ്രോസ്റ്റ് ബൈറ്റ് ഡി ആൻഡ് എച്ച് സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ ജനറൽ ഹൈപ്പോതെർമിയ ആൻഡ് ഐ സ്റ്റാൻഡ് ഫോർ ഇമേർഷൻ ഫോർട്ട് ഓർ ട്രഞ്ച് ഫോർട്ട് ലെറ്റ് സി ഇൻഡേറ്റ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ഹെൽത്ത് ഇഫക്ട് ഓഫ് കോൾഡ് ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ ഫസ്റ്റ് വൺ ഇസ് ചിൽബ്രെയിൻസ് ചിൽബ്രെയിൻസ് ഇസ് ദ പെയിൻഫുൾ ഇൻഫ്ലാമേഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ സ്മാൾ ബ്ലഡ് വെസൽസ് ഇൻ ദ സ്കിൻ സോ ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ദ പെയിൻഫുൾ ഇൻഫ്ലാമേഷൻ ഓഫ് സ്മാൾ or minute blood vessels in the skin that may cause itching sensation red patches on the skin swelling and blistering on either on the hands or the feet so chilblains are the painful inflammation of small blood vessels which leads to itching red patches swelling and blistering of the hands and feet second one is erythrocytosis it is a condition caused by exposure to cold and it is characterized by swelling of the limbs and the appearance of irregular red blue patches on the skin red blue patches on the skin and swelling of the limbs that is erythrocytosis the third one is frost bite that is reddening of the skin with localized burning sensation or burning pain and numbness lack of sensations mostly seen in the fingers toes cheeks nose ears etc so frost bite is the reddening of the skin with localized burning sensation and even numbness mostly seen in fingers toes cheeks nose ears etc then extreme cold temperature also may lead to general hypothermia that is decreased normal body temperature that is decreased temperature body temperature that is general hypothermia the last one is immersion fort or trench fort so because of extreme cold exposure that may lead to numbness pain cramps muscle cramps that may further lead to ulceration and gangrene of the foot that is called immersion fort or trench fort that is numbness pain cramps ulceration and finally the gangrene so in short diseases due to physical agent that is extreme temperature that heat and cold heat includes direct effect that is burns heat exhaustion heat stroke heat cramps prickly heat or pleuritic rashes miliaria rubra then indirect effects are decreased efficiency increased fatigue and enhanced accident rates in the industry then second one is exposure to extreme cold that is chilblains erythrocytosis frost bite general hypothermia immersion fort or trench fort etc under physical hazards second uh, agent is light or lighting so in an industry the workers may be or can be exposed to either risk of the poor illumination poor light or excessive illumination that is excessive brightness the intense direct glare may result to or lead to blurring of vision and further lead to accidents in the industry thus there should be sufficient and suitable lighting in the industries either from the natural source or from the artificial source wherever the people are working the health effects of light includes poor or inadequate illumination or inadequate lighting then second one is excessive brightness and glare let us discuss in detail what is the poor and inadequate illumination and excessive brightness and glare first one is poor or dim light or inadequate illumination this may cause both the acute effects and the chronic effects acute effects of poor or dim lights includes eye strain headache high pain lacrimation that is excessive production of tears lacrimation congestion around the cornea of the eye eye fatigueness or eye fatigue and double vision etc so acute effect of the poor or dim lights includes eye strain headache eye pain lacrimation congestion around the cornea eye fatigue double vision etc the chronic effects of poor or dim light includes occupational cataract occupational cataract then minors nystagmus nystagmus is an involuntary eye movement that is a rapid movement of the eyes so it may be side to side up and down or in a circular motion that is nystagmus so the chronic effect of poor or dim light in the industry may include occupational cataract and minors nystagmus then second is excessive brightness and glare so the exposure to excessive light that is excessive bright light or glare associated with the discomfort annoyance annoyance means irritation 
then visual fatigue blurring of visions uh, no clarity in vision that is blurring of visions and that may even lead to accidents so the excessive brightness and glare may be associated with the discomfort annoyance irritation visual fatigue blurring of visions accidents etc so in short diseases due to physical agents that is light there are two problems that is one is due to poor illumination and the second one is due to excessive brightness and glare poor illumination or dim light may lead to acute effects and chronic effects acute effects includes eye strain headache eye pain lacrimation congestion around cornea eye fatigue double vision etc then chronic effect of poor or dim light includes occupational cataract and minus nystagmus then excessive brightness and glare in the industry may lead to discomfort annoyance or irritation visual fatigue blurring of visions and even accidents the third physical agent is noise noise is also health hazard in many industries because industries functions with uh, many missions that may make a noise the degree of injury depends upon number of factors that is a degree of injury from the exposure of noise depends upon number of factors such as intensity of the noise frequency of the noise range of the noise duration of exposure and individual susceptibility to noise so the noise is an another health hazard in many industries the degree of injury from the noise uh, depends upon number of factors such as intensity of the noise frequency of the noise range of the noise duration of exposure that is number of times duration of exposure and individual susceptibility towards the noise the health effects of noise includes auditory effect and non auditory effect auditory effect and non auditory effect let us discuss what are the auditory effects and non auditory effects first one is auditory effect it includes a temporary threshold shift or auditory fatigue and permanent threshold shift under effect of noise first one is auditory effect auditory effect includes temporary threshold shift or auditory fatigue and permanent threshold shift so let us see what are the temporary threshold shift here temporary loss of hearing acuity or hearing after exposure to a loud noise then that can be recovered the person can recovered from this uh, problem within 16 to 48 hours thus we call it is the temporary threshold shift then in permanent threshold shift that is the permanent loss of hearing acuity that is irreversible so here the loss of hearing is irreversible thus we call it as a permanent threshold shift thus auditory effect may lead to temporary threshold shift for 16 to 48 hours or permanent threshold shift that is permanent loss of hearing due to exposure of the excessive noise in the industry the permanent threshold shift also known as occupational deafness thus effect of noise also lead to occupational deafness second is non auditory effect it includes nervousness fatigue interference in communication by speech so difficulty to communicate because of the heavy noise then decreased work efficiency decreased work efficiency and sometimes annoyance that is irritation so non auditory effects includes nervousness fatigue interference with the communication especially by uh, speech then decreased efficiency work efficiency and uh, annoyance or irritations so these are the non auditory effect they are nervousness fatigue interference in communication by speech and decreased efficiency and uh, annoyance or irritation in short effects due to physical agent that is noise auditory effects and non auditory effects auditory effects includes temporary temporary threshold shift that is temporary hearing loss and permanent threshold shift that is permanent hearing loss it is also known as occupational deafness non auditory effects includes nervousness fatigue interference in communication by speech decreased work efficiency and annoyance or irritations the fourth physical agent is vibration the vibrations in the industry may be due to the uh, functions of drills hammers etc the frequency may range from uh, 10 to 500 hertz the continuous work with uh, such machines uh, affects the hand and uh, arms of the employees it may produce injuries of the joints of the hands uh, injuries of the elbows uh, injury of the shoulder that is shoulder girdle structure the vibration not only affects the joints but also it may affect the internal organs and the supportive ligaments of the hands elbows and shoulders 
the health effect of vibration includes segmental vibration and wall body vibration segmental vibration and wall body vibration let us see what is segmental and wall body vibration first one is segmental vibration that means one part of the body so that is hand arm vibration syndromes halves h a v s hand arm vibration syndrome symptoms are tingling numbness blanching pain etc tingling means prickling or stinging sensation numbness means loss of sensation blanching of fingers means uh, the color changes pale colors white colors etc and moreover there will be pain so and arm vibration syndrome includes uh, tingling numbness blanching pain etc the second one is white fingers after after a few months or few years of exposure to segmental vibration the fine blood vessels of the hands or fingers may become increasingly sensitive to spasm and it looks like a white in color you can see the picture here this is called as white fingers the second one is the wall body vibration that is a total body complete body vibration the health effects of the wall body vibration includes fatigue irritability headache osteoarthritis that is joint pains then disorders of the spine that is either back pain etc in short effects due to physical agents such as vibration first one is segmental vibration it includes hand arm vibration syndrome halves and the white fingers then wall body vibration includes fatigue irritability headache osteoarthritis disorders of the spine etc next is radiation the fifth physical hazard is the radiation exposure to very high levels of radiation for a prolonged period or exposure to the microwaves can lead to acute and chronic health effects the effect of occupational radiation are two types that is from ionizing radiation and from non ionizing radiations the effect of occupational radiation are two types that is from ionizing radiation and non ionizing radiation let us see what is the effects from ionizing radiation and what is the effect from non ionizing radiation ionizing radiation includes microwaves that is x rays and radioactive isotopes such as gamma rays beta particles alpha particles etc all this comes under ionizing radiation nowadays it is used increasingly especially in the application of medicine and industry example the microwaves and the radioactive isotopes the important radioactive isotopes are cobalt 60 and phosphorus 32 exposing ionizing radiation may lead to sensitive to certain tissues of our body certain organs such as especially bone marrow gonads etc the maximum permissible level of occupational exposure to ionizing radiation set by international commission of radiological protection is at 50 rem per year to the whole body so the maximum permissible level of ionizing radiation according to international commission of radiological protection per year is 50 rem per year the health effects due to ionizing radiation are cancer leukemia ulceration then genetic changes such as chromosomal mutation that may lead to sterility then malformation and ultimately there is a chance of fatal or death so effects due to ionizing radiation includes cancer leukemia ulceration genetic changes malformation and ultimately or finally death second is non ionizing radiation exposure to non ionizing radiation such as infrared rays laser rays and ultraviolet light under non ionizing radiation ultraviolet radiation mainly occurs in arc and other electric welding process the health effects of ultraviolet radiation or that is from electric welding process or from arc is known as welders flash welders flash is nothing but it is a intense conjunctivitis due to uh, continuously uh, watching or observing the or seeing the welding flash next is keratitis it is nothing but is inflammation of the cornea of the eye so it is an inflammatory condition that affects the cornea of eye the symptoms includes both the redness and pain in the eyes then other problem includes skin redness premature skin aging that is skin is looks like aging then skin cancer corneal and retinal injury etc then an another problem that occurs is aplastic anemia another an issue related to radiation is acute radiation syndrome nothing but it is also known as radiation sickness that is nothing but it's a damage to the body caused by a large dose of radiation often received over a short period of time 
So it is damage to the body caused by large dose of radiation often from short period of time. So a person receiving short period of time with the large dose of radiation that affect the, the damage the body that is known as acute radiation syndrome or radiation sickness. In short, the effects due to physical agents such as radiation includes uh, from ionizing and uh, from non-ionizing. From ionizing, the sources are X-rays, gamma rays, beta particles, alpha particles, gamma particles, etc. That may lead to cancer, leukemia, ulceration, genetic changes that is chromosomal mutation, sterility, sterility, malformation, ultimately death. Then from non-ionizing exposure, non-ionizing radiation, the sources are ultraviolet rays, infrared rays, laser rays, etc. That may lead to welders flash, that is nothing but intense conjunctivitis, keratitis and aplastic anemia. Other symptoms such as skin redness, premature skin aging and skin cancer, corneal and conjunctival burns, retinal injury, etc. Then an important occupational program related to radiation due to radiation includes acute radiation syndrome or radiation sickness. It is nothing but damage to the body by exposure of large dose of radiation for a short period of time. The sixth physical hazard is electricity. The sixth one is electricity. The common electric hazard set of workplace includes a faulty or damaged wirings. Any faulty or damaged wirings. Overloading circuits or short circuits. Use of extension cords. That is other connection, connection boards. Use of extension cords. Then any water spill on the electrical devices. So water spilling on the electrical devices may cause electrical hazards. Then improper grounding. Grounding means giving earthing to the wiring so improper grounding then incorrectly placed electrical cords so displaced electrical cords or electrical wires and any loose contact that is loose fitting plugs or loose contacts etc these are the common sources or causes of common electrical hazards at the workplace so health effects from electricity or electrical hazards may lead to either shock or burns or even death shock burns even death. The seventh or last physical hazards includes others which include pressure, increased pressure in the various chambers in the industry and factory. The sources are the cracked and damaged vessels in an industry or factory may result in leakage. Then pulsation, vibration, release of high pressure gases. So cracked and damaged vessels also may release a high pressure gases or will flash from broken lines. Will flash is nothing but uh, sudden jerk. So sudden jerk from broken lines also may lead to uh, certain physical hazards in an industry and factory. Rupture failure is nothing but it is the ductile uh, rupture of the container with the uh, high pressure or loaded with the high tension. So rupture failures even can lead to or much more catastrophic that can cause considerable damage to the life of the employees and even for the property. The potential health and safety hazards of uh, leaking vessels in an industry or factory may include poisoning, fire, blast injuries, air embolism, suffocation, so explosion hazards and even death. So poisoning, fire, blast injuries, air embolism, suffocation, explosion hazards and even death. So, so far we have discussed about the physical hazards of occupational health hazards. In that we have discussed extreme temperature heat and cold, light, noise, vibration, radiation, electricity and others it includes pressure. The second important classification of occupational hazard is chemical hazards. Let us discuss in detail about chemical hazards in a occupational setting. There are no industry or factory which doesn't make use of chemical. Almost all the factories they use the chemical. Because of that chemical hazards are or increase in the counter with the introduction of newer and complex chemicals which is used by the factories and industries. The ill effects produced by chemical agents depends upon three factors. First one is the duration of exposure of the chemical. Second one is the quantum, the volume of exposure of the chemicals by the employees and uh, last factor is the individual susceptibility towards the chemicals individual susceptibility to get hazards towards the chemicals so these are the three factors which produce the ill effects due to chemical hazards in an industry or factory there are eight various forms of chemical agents used by the industry and the factory which includes first one is gases second one is fumes third one is vapors and the aerosols then uh, fourth one is mists the fifth one is dust or particulates. 
then sixth one is chemicals and medications uh, seventh one is solutions and solvents and last eight one is others which includes uh, metals so these are the various forms of chemical agents used in the industry or factory let us discuss in detail about these chemical agents first is the gases for example methane gases nitrogen gases carbon dioxide etc used in the factory or industries as a chemical agents the second one is fumes fumes are nothing but emission of gases or smoke is called fumes an amount of gas or vapor that smells strongly or that is dangerous to inhale is called fumes so fumes are considered as noxious fumes that is emitted from the industry or factory which cause a chemical hazard the third one is vapors vapors is a substance diffused or suspended in the air especially one normally liquid or solid in nature so vapors are a substance diffused or suspended in the air the next is aerosols it is a substance enclosed under pressure and which is released as a fine spray by means of a propellant gas this also another chemical agent used in the industrial factory that is aerosols the fourth one is mist mist is a, a cloud of tiny water droplets suspended in the atmospheric air at or near the earth's surface that limits the visibility which limits the visibility of the employee so mist is a cloud of tiny water droplets suspended in the atmospheric air the fifth one is dust or particulates dust is nothing but it's a fine dry powder consisting of tiny particles of earth or waste matter lying on the ground or on the surface or carried in the air so dust may be lying on the ground or it may be on the surface of any uh, material or it may carried in the air for example asbestos dust silica and other fine dust or fibrous materials regarding dust and the particulates we will be discussing in detail in the next video in relation to or in association with the pneumoconiosis next is chemicals and the medications for example acids and bases acid is nothing but any hydrogen containing substance that is capable of donating a proton that is hydrogen ion to another substance at the same time base is a molecule or ion able to accept a hydrogen ion from an acid so this is acid and bases these are the other chemical agents which is used in the most of the industry and the factory that is chemicals and the medications the next chemical agent is solutions and solvents a solution is a homogeneous mixture of one or more solutes dissolved in a solvent example petroleum solution in which solute is the substance that dissolves in a solvent to produce a homogeneous mixture that is in the smaller amount in the solution and the solvent will be the larger amount in the solution it is a substance in which a solute dissolves to produce a homogeneous mixture so i am not going to explain in detail there are many solutions and solvents which are used by the industry and factory as a chemical agents which cause chemical hazards then eighth one is last one is others which includes metals heavy metals and highly reactive metals heavy metals example is lead heavy metal means a metal of relatively high density high density metal is called heavy metal or it has a high relative atomic weight then second one is highly reactive metals which includes potassium sodium calcium aluminum etc so which is generally present in the form of their oxides so these are the different forms of chemical agents which is used in the industry or factory next is the ways of acquiring chemical hazards or routes of entry of chemical hazards into the body of the employee so there are three routes or three ways first one is by local action or skin contact second one is by inhalation and third one is by ingestion let us discuss in detail about the routes of entry of chemical agents into the body of the employees first one is local action or skin contact through local action and skin contact the chemical agents which enter to the body through local action or skin contact may cause dermatitis eczema ulcer and even cancer by its primary irritant actions and in secondary some cause dermatitis by allergic reaction so chemical uh, agents which enter into the body through skin contact or local action either act as a primary irritant actions or it may cause allergic reaction in the body or in the skin such as dermatitis that is nothing but inflammation of the skin thus the important problem of the chemical agents which enter through the skin or local contact that is occupational dermatitis 
So nowadays it is a big problem in the industry which may be caused by mission oil. The oil is used in the missions, the rubber materials used in the industry, the caustic alkalis and limes which is used in the industry, so etc. may cause occupational dermatitis. Then some chemicals like aromatic nitro and amino components which absorb through the skin and cause systemic effects in the body. For example, TNT that is trinitrotoluene. Thus, the chemical agents which center through the skin and the local action may cause a systemic health effects such as renal diseases, respiratory diseases, skin diseases, hematologic diseases, cardiovascular diseases, neurological diseases, carcinogenic effect or actions and the teratogenic effects and the actions. The second route is by inhalation. So, the chemical can enter into the body of the employees by inhalation such as dust, gases, metal and their components. First one is related to dust. Dusts are the finely divided solid particles with the size ranging from 0.1 to 150 microns. They are both organic and inorganic in origin. So they call organic dust and inorganic dust. So usually the dust particles which is larger than the size of 10 microns will settle down from the air rapidly and the dust particle which is smaller than 5 micron directly enter through inhalation into the body of the employee and which causes pneumoconiosis. So, this topic will be discussed in detail in the next video as or in relation to pneumoconiosis. So, next is inhalation of gases. There are four different types of gases can be inhaled by the employees such as simple asphyxiants, irritant gases, chemical asphyxiants and anesthetic gases. Simple asphyxiants example is methane, nitrogen, carbon dioxide etc. Irritant gases inhaled by the employee example is ammonia, sulfur dioxide etc. Chemical asphyxiants or gases include carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, hydrogen cyanide etc. And aesthetic gases which is inhaled by the employee include chloroform, ether, trichloroethylene etc. So these are the gases which can be inhaled by the employees. So there are four types of simple asphyxiants, gases, irritant gases, chemical asphyxiant type gases and anesthetic gases. Next one is inhalation of the metals and their compounds. So factory or industry may use many metals in their production of certain materials. The example for metals are lead, mercury, cadmium, arsenic etc. Inhalation of the metals, various metals may lead to toxic hazards from the metals or even poisoning from the metal. The third method of routes of entry of the chemicals into the body or ways of acquiring uh, chemical hazards into the body through ingestion that is taking through or by mouth. So ingestion of metallic components or metallic uh, materials such as arsenic, antimony, beryllium, chromium, cadmium, cobalt, lead, mercury, manganese, zinc etc. All may lead to certain symptoms such as or all may cause certain symptoms like abdominal colic or abdominal pain, loss of appetite, anemia, it can be lead to anemia and it can be even lead to constipation among the employees. So ingestion of metallic compounds can cause abdominal colic, loss of appetite and anemia and even constipation. Next is disease due to chemical agents. So chemical agents can be classified as gases, dust, then chemical compounds, metals etc. So gases may lead to gas poisoning, dust may lead to pneumoconiosis. We will discuss in detail in the next video. There are two types of dust as we already discussed, inorganic dust and organic dust. Inorganic dust may lead to cancer of lungs and organic dust may lead to asthma. Under inorganic dust, coal dust may cause anthracosis, silica may cause silicosis, asbestos may cause asbestosis, iron may cause siderosis, altogether inorganic dust may cause cancer of lungs. And under organic dust, the can fiber dust cause bagasosis, cotton dust may cause bisonosis, and hay or hay or grain dust may cause farmer's lung disease, etc. In short, it may cause asthma to the employee. So, this will be discussed in detail in the next video when I discuss about pneumoconiosis. Then other chemical compounds also cause burns, dermatitis, cancer, respiratory illness among the employees. Then metals as we are already discussed, lead, mercury, arsenic, chromium etc. may cause toxic hazards or metal poisoning in the employees those who are exposed to 
for those who are inhaled or ingested this type of metals during their work. So, in short, disease due to chemical agents includes gases may lead to gas poisoning, dust may lead to pneumoconiosis, and organic dust such as coal dust may lead to anthracosis, silica lead to silicosis, asbestos dust may lead to asbestosis, iron dust may lead to siderosis, and organic dust in, in general they cause asthma, in specific can fiber dust may lead to bagasosis, cotton dust may lead to bisinosis, tobacco dust may lead to tuberculosis, hair dust or grain dust may lead to farmer's lung disease. So this will be discussed later when I discuss about the, in the next video about the pneumoconiosis. Other chemical which is used in the factory or industry may lead to some of the diseases such as burns, dermatitis, inflammation of the skin, cancer, respiratory illness, etc. among the employees. Then metal and their components due to inhalation or ingestion, they may cause so, uh, toxic hazards or poisoning. And the employees which is exposed to the chemicals often cause uh, occupational cancer, occupational dermatitis and systemic health effects uh, among the employees. Occupational cancer such as cancer of skin, cancer of lungs, cancer of bladder, etc. Occupational dermatitis means inflammation of the skin that is dermatitis or even eczema. Then all the system also may be affected with the exposure to the chemicals in the employees at the work set. The third occupational hazard is biological hazards. Biological hazards. So the workers in the industry or factory may be exposed to infective and parasitic agents at the place of work or at work settings. This is mainly prevalent in developing countries that may result to high risk for the employees in those settings. The risk group for this uh, biological hazards may include the people who are working at health care setting that is health care setting workers or health personnel they are high risk for hepatitis, tuberculosis, HIV or AIDS, encephalitis etc. And even those who are working in the agricultural field that is agricultural workers also are a risk group for certain diseases, occupational, biological hazards. And people who are working in animal husbandry also may prone to get a certain disease from the animal products. So, the risk group of people who are having different occupation, the most important risk people are health care personnel and those who are working in the agricultural field that is agricultural workers, farmers etc. or those who are working on animal husbandry also have a risk group or may prone to get certain biological hazards and biological diseases from their occupational setting. Biological agents or infective agents are living organisms, pathogenic or non-pathogenic organisms. Pathogenic organisms are capable of causing human diseases by infectious process which is common in the or at the workplace. They may lead to or they may produce zoonotic diseases. A disease may transfer from animal to the human beings or human host. The biological agents which cause biological hazards at occupational settings include bacteria, viruses, fungi, parasites, insects, hazardous plants, birds, animals and others. So these are the biological agents which can cause biological hazards at the occupational setting for the employees. Let us discuss in detail about the what are the different problems that is caused by biological agents at the occupational settings as biological hazards. So from bacteria it may lead to leptospirosis, tuberculosis, tetanus etc. So, bacteria can cause occupational hazards such as leptospirosis, tuberculosis and uh, even tetanus among the employees. The viruses may cause uh, novel corona that is COVID-19, encephalitis, cytomegalovirus diseases that is CMV diseases and even hepatitis A, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, hepatitis C etc and even Ebola virus disease from Ebola virus. The third biological agent is fungi. Fungi also can cause certain occupational diseases among the employees such as occupational candidiasis that is skin fungal infections and sporotrichosis such as an infection which is caused by the fungus is called sporotrichosis. You can see the picture of sporotrichosis. These are the common fungal infection can occur at occupational settings. Then parasites. The most common parasitic infection which cause at uh, uh, occupational settings are Histosomiasis. It is also known as Bilharzia. It is a disease or which is a disease caused by the trematode flat worms. Histosomiasis is a vector-borne disease that is caused by the parasite worms. 
Another parasitic infection can occur in the industry or factory is hydatidosis or human echinococcus. It is a parasitic disease caused by tapworms of the echinococcus. Usually it is spread by the or the vector is freshwater snails. So freshwater snails act as a vector and it causes a parasitic infection in the factory and industry for the employees is known as hydatidosis or human echinococcus. The fifth biological agent is insects. Especially mosquitoes and ticks may cause various form of infections or it may spread. It may act as the vector at the occupational setting for the employees and it causes certain diseases. Mosquito example is dengue fever, chicken gunia, etc. So mosquito act as a vector and it transmit the diseases to the uh, employees like dengue and chicken gunia, etc. Then tick also act as a vector and it spread the disease of Kaisan or forest disease KFD or it is also known as monkey fever or it is a tick-borne viral hemorrhagic disease especially occur those who are working uh, near to the forest and those who are working at the forest and for the farmers etc. The sixth biological agent is hazardous plants. Various hazardous plants which is used in the factory and industry can cause the defects to the employees. For example is poison ivy. It may cause rashes to the employees those who are working in the such industry or factory. The seventh biological agent is birds. Birds can cause certain infectious diseases to the uh, employees or uh, the workers, those who are working in the, especially in the poultry farms, uh, those who are working at the animal husbandry, those who are working at the slaughter homes, etc. For example, avian flu or bird flu, that is HYN1. Then those who are working in the uh, zoos, etc., they may be infected with the ornithosis, that is cytokosis or parrot fever. So these are the important infectious diseases can be spread for the employees, those who are working in the either in the slaughter home or in the zoo, etc. The eighth biological agent is animals. Animals also can cause many infectious diseases to the employees and the workers in their occupational settings. For example, anthrax, brucellosis, swine flu, etc. These are the occupational zoonosis which can occur to the employees or the workers in the different occupational settings. For example, those who are working in the zoos, those who are working in the poultry farms and those who are working in the slaughter homes, etc. The last one is others. For example, various bloodborne pathogens can cause diseases for the employees or workers in the different settings, especially for the healthcare personnel can be infected with the bloodborne pathogens such as HIV or AIDS. In short, the disease due to biological agents includes uh, from bacteria that is leptospirosis, TB, tetanus, etc. From virus that is novel corona, COVID-19, encephalitis, hepatitis A, B, C, E, etc. Then cytomegalovirus diseases, Ebola virus diseases, etc. Then from fungi that is from the molds, trichosis, occupational candidiasis, etc. Then from parasites, uh, schistosomiasis, hydatidosis or human echinococcosis, etc. Then from insects such as mosquitoes, dengue, chicken gunia, etc. From tick, kaisan or forest disease or monkey fever, etc. And from birds, avian flu, ornithosis, cytokosis, etc. Then from hazardous plants, for example, poison ivy may lead to rashes to the employees. Then from animals, anthrax, brucellosis, H1N1, rabies, etc. Then last one is others. Bloodborne, various bloodborne pathogens may infect the employees such as HIV, AIDS, Hepatitis B, etc. This is about the biological hazards. The fourth occupational hazard is mechanical hazards. We have already mentioned some of the points under physical hazards. Let us see what are the mechanical hazards at the occupational setting. As you know that every industry or factory they use many machines. They use of machines uh, driven by the either by the power or electricity for increasing the production in the industry or factory. Mechanical hazards usually can occur due to the protruding moving parts of the machines, any sharp parts of the machines. And sometimes this hazard, mechanical hazards can cause by the carelessness of the employees or workers at the occupational settings. Let us see the different mechanical agents. Mechanical agents are those which can potentially cause either accidents or injury or strain or discomfort to the employees. So these are the agents which cause or which potentially cause the accidents, injury, strain, discomfort at work settings. For example, is unprotected machines. That is unsafe for inadequate equipment. That is unsafe for equipment without safety precautions. Then lifting devices and lifting heavy loads. 
can cause various problems to the employees. Then slippery floors can lead to falls and fractures and other injuries. Then repetitive motions of the machines due to lack of safety or due to carelessness of the employee or workers that may lead to either accidents or injury or strain, discomfort, disability etc. to the employees or workers. The fifth occupational hazard is psychosocial hazards. Psychosocial hazards may occur when a worker fails to adapt an alien or sound psychosocial environment in his work settings, which leads to various psychological factors and psychological problems. Psychological hazards is nothing but when a worker or employer fails to adapt a sound psychosocial environment in its work settings or in occupational settings that may lead to various psychological factors and psychological related problems. The example for psychosocial factors are type and rhythm of the work of the employee, work stability, service condition, various service conditions, terms and conditions of the service or occupation, job satisfaction, leadership style of the manager, job security, then workers or employees participation or cooperation in the work setting, their communication and the channel of communication, system of payment, either salary, wages or rent, uh, the system of payment, then various welfare activities or welfare services or conditions for the employees, then degree of responsibility of the employee in his work setting, then activities of the trade unions, then incentives, various incentive measures for the employees, etc. These are the various factors, psychosocial factors, which leads into the psychosocial assaults at the occupational settings. Psychosocial assaults can be classified into or it includes psychological assaults, psychosomatic assaults and social assaults. Let us discuss in detail about psychological assaults, psychosomatic assaults and social assaults. The psychological assaults can be directly related to the job of the employee or any outside pressures for the employee or it may be problems related to colleagues or it may be related to problem with the, uh, the workmates or work colleagues. First one is directly related to the job, that is overload of the work, poor organization, poor opportunity for promotion or less opportunity for the promotion of the employee, then uh, decreased or low job responsibility or sometimes is feeling boring at the work uh, uh, situation. This all comes uh, directly related to job. Psychological assaults also can be caused by outside pressure such as financial problems, family difficulties or family problems, transport difficulties, etc. Then problem with the colleagues, that is any conflict or any bullying with the uh, colleagues using bad words, etc. So these are the three areas that may lead to psychological assaults for the employees at the work set. Problem with the colleagues such as a poor interpersonal relationship that is IPR among the employees or among the co-workers or with the managers often may lead to or it may be a source of, it may be a reason of conflict and stress at the work situation or work setting. Next is disorders due to psychological agents or psychological hazards. Psychological hazards even result from stress and strain include lack of job satisfaction, anxiety, frustration, emotional tension or work related stress to the employee, depression, discouragement, boredom or loneliness, memory loss, dissatisfaction in work situation, irritability and even it lead to poor human relations etc. These are the disorders can occur due to psychological assaults by stress and strain for the employees. Second is psychosomatic assaults. Psychological factors or psychological assaults may lead to psychosomatic illness or diseases among the employees which includes fatigue, Musculoskeletal disorders such as MSDs, it includes pain in the shoulder, pain in the neck, pain in the back, etc. Then even it can lead to peptic ulcer, hypertension, heart diseases or rapid or early aging, etc. These are the, some of the examples for the psychosomatic diseases led from the psychological hazards for the employees. Then third one is social hazards. Both the psychological and the psychosomatic hazards may lead into social hazards with the economic problems related to salary, related to wages of the employees, etc. The health effect due to psychosocial hazards are mainly two types, psychological and behavioral changes among the employees, then psychosomatic diseases. First one is psychological and behavioral changes, which includes hostility, unfriendly with the workers or poor human relations among the employees. That may lead into anxiety, tiredness or fatigue, depression. If it is not treated well, that may even go for aggressiveness, violence by the employee, burnout and it may lead to alcoholism, drug abuse or any other substance abuse. Sometimes there will be absenteeism from the part of the 
employees. So these are some of the psychological and behavioral changes can occur among the employees due to psychosocial hazards. And if the situation is not treated or addressed, the employee later become unmotivated, depressed from various psychosomatic diseases which you have been already explained. The sixth psychosocial hazard is others, which include ergonomical hazard. Let us see what is ergonomical hazards. Ergonomical hazard is related to abnormal position or bodily alignment of the employees during occupational settings. That is fatigue, tiredness, boredom, tension or stress produced by the repetition of the same posture in the occupational setting or same position at work site for a prolonged period by the employees. That may result in musculoskeletal injuries that may lead to disorders of the tendons, ligaments, nerves, joints, bones, etc. So, unhealthy position or body alignment during or while doing any occupation may lead to ergonomical hazards. So, so far we have discussed about the occupational hazards. Today we have discussed about the physical hazards, chemical hazards, biological hazards, mechanical hazards, psychosocial hazards and others that include ergonomical hazards. So, this is about the first part of the video of occupational health nursing. So, thanks for watching. Hope this video really benefits in your studies and exams. If you feel it is worth and benefit, please like, share and subscribe my channel. Stay tuned with Angel Health Academy for the second part of the video of occupational health nursing that will be related to pneumoconiosis. Thank you.